I'm Professor Ian Burgess. I'm in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, my research team consists of Amanda Quirk, who's a postdoctoral fellow in the audience, uh, and colleagues at the Canadian, Canadian Neutron Beam Center in Chalk River, Ontario. And our research is uh, using a specialized uh, technique, which involves the uh, scattering of neutrons, uh, which are found at dedicated research reactors, to actually probe the interfaces of uh, biological membranes. And from that information, we hope to be able to extract information about how cell processes work. Broadly speaking, uh, my research group is a group of electrochemists and material scientists. Um, but our project that we're working with through the support of the Fedoric Center is uh, more biological in application. Uh, we're interested in how phospholipid uh, membrane bilayers, which are found throughout your body, respond to electric fields. That's the connection with our expertise as electrochemists, is in your body you have natural electric fields that can perturb how these membranes behave. If you're an electrochemist, what you can do is you can precisely control these electric fields on biomimetic membranes. So these would be synthetic membranes, not real membranes that exist in your body, but uh, models that are more simple and easier to understand. The fundamental physics and chemistry that you can extract from it, though, is then relatable to the real systems in your body. Uh, so solving problems related to these types of soft materials would be important for uh, sort of drug delivery applica applications and real physiological um, uh, consequences. The problem that you have if you want to study such systems is you need a technique that is very sensitive to the individual components that make up a phospholipid membrane. Uh, there's not too many techniques which actually can do this. Fortunately for us, we have, through Fedoric Center funding, uh, access to the Canadian Neutron Beam Center, which is a ded dedicated neutron scattering facility in Chalk River, Ontario. It's a research reactor. Uh, they're freely encourage and support academic researchers to come to the research reactor where they have instruments which you can use to study these types of problems. So our partnership with uh, the CNBC, the Canadian Neutron Beam Center, gives us the opportunity to take our um, biomimetic systems and make studies on them that we can then relate to uh, physiological conditions. I'll leave it as simple as that. Materials research in this capacity could definitely be uh, materials that are used in uh, nuclear reactors. Uh, so that would include um, better fuel cladding. That's the material that goes around, uh, say, the uranium rods in a can-do reactor. Uh, there's lots of issues with these. Uh, other problems that you might associate with materials problems in a, in a nuclear uh, facility would be corrosion. Uh, you have a lot of water that's used as coolant. Um, and when you start actually using this water as coolant, you have to worry about uh, radioactive decay basically promoting corrosion. So, so a rusty pipe in general is not a good thing. Uh, a rusty pipe in a nuclear reactor is a major issue. Uh, so materials research where you can basically prevent that level of corrosion and minimize this would be very important. My particular interest is, is uh, what we call soft materials. So this is not so much uh, uh, studying materials in use for nuclear reactors, but sort of the converse, taking the product of a nuclear reactor, which is neutrons, and using them to tell you about materials that otherwise you would never expect to find anywhere near a nuclear reactor. So that's a separation between sort of fundamental science, where you use nuclear research to study materials, and then the flip side is you uh, do materials research to build better uh, power reactors.